It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. You can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting, uh, either through my website, emailrevealer.com, or at uh, yeah, email me at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. Okay, I'm really excited about our show today. We have Arturo Tafoya. Now, you can find him on uh, Twitter, A Tafoyaski, Tafoyavsky, A T A F O Y O U S K O V S K Y. No one's going to remember that. A T O F O Y O V S K Y. You can find him on his YouTube, which is the Conspiracy Distillery, and also his website, conspiracydistillery.com. You can read about him in the Financial Times, talking about this very subject that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, he's been doing a lot of research with uh, some uh, peer-reviewed papers uh, involving the investigation into the QAnon phenomenon, who's really behind it, why it's still dangerous, uh, and what they've been up to, other cons and scams and uh, uh, operations that have been going on over this years by this group of global grifters, as he describes them. So, Mr. Uh, Arturo uh, Tafoya, are you there? Yes. Uh, uh, thanks for having me. I'm psyched to be here and ready to go. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Uh, tell the audience about yourself. Who is Arturo Tafoya? Well, <laughs> first of all, nice to meet you guys. Um, I'm Arturo from Mexico. I'm your friendly neighbor. Uh, and I was throughout 2017 and partially 2018 uh, helping what was a group that was putting out puzzles and conspiracy theories on 4chan, on Twitter, and on different social media. And uh, but that's what uh, that's the last part. But I'm I'm just a normal guy who really got involved in like fall into a rabbit hole that uh, ended up being a radicalization, uh, I don't know if it's a program or, or, or group. But, uh, you know, I've, I've always been a, a very skeptic person. I, I'm, I, I even, uh, I'm from Mexico, and, and here is a very Catholic uh, society and I've always been against uh, not always but uh, at a certain age I, I started to rebel against religion uh, I I always have this affinity to uh, computer programming and design has always been uh, kind of like a hobby I am an industrial engineer you know, recently I, I started, I, uh, when I came back to my, uh, to my, uh, home, uh, to my birthplace, I, I, after this major breakup and, and this change in my life, I, I decided to study me, uh, medicine and did four semesters until I just couldn't, you know, I, you, I tried to work and, and study medicine at the same time, and it was <laughs> totally not worth it. Uh, no, it, it was worth it, but, you know, it was just like, I, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it can be brutal uh, studying medicine, yeah. Now, now the thing is, you, when you mentioned that you were studying these puzzles and stuff, you're talking about the Cicada 3301? Exactly. What, that, tell us, what is that? that well, Sakita three through one is uh and and let's call it in uh in the internet lore is is uh it's an uh internet puzzle, a scavenger hunt sort of that st started in twenty twelve. Nobody really knew nobody really uh, still knows who started it or why even it, it was made. 
but it was aimed at recruiting intelligent people. Uh, and it was this series of, 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 of steps that at the end they promised to recruit you in, into this group that was didn't even uh, explain themselves what they were about. This happened through 2012, uh, 13, 14. Uh, then it started to change, but it's it's been classified by the Rolling Stones as the number one and uh, number two mystery, uh, biggest mystery of the internet, uh, because nobody ha- had ever figure out who who were the people behind, what were the intentions, because uh, there wasn't a marketing intention. The people who allegedly won were never heard of it again. Plus uh, an injection of speculation and conspiracies regarding, uh, uh, you know, the, that the group might be MI6, that the group uh, is a C- uh, CIA recruitment tool. So uh, that just fed into this uh, this event that would later come, but it, it happens throughout the years. You know, uh, you got on, on 2015 uh, an alleged hack to Planned Parenthood uh, done by the calling himself to care through Q1. Uh, uh, the, the presence there of of of, of some of the. And the obvious presence of, of the members and, and the mentioning of this group uh, in some way connected to QAnon. You know, uh, it, people mo- mostly, I think it's easier to recognize QAnon in comparison to Cicada, but if you just look a little bit, it's just one or two degrees of separation uh, from each other, and uh, this, uh, and it's for a reason, right? right? But in, in general, that's that's what uh, Cicada about uh, are re- allegedly a recruiting tool for smart people to uh, that need to solve a series of puzzles, not only regarding encryption, but you also needed to have like uh, understand. Uh, art and history and all that uh, but it, it again it, it ended up in a, it's a really good track for, and then, for people who have, right then explain to us yeah? the, what is the connection then between Cicada 3301 and then how did that evolve or connect to Q well I, I had no no when I got into the group, you know, it was 2017 uh, in October, yes. 2017, just when QAnon was was going on. Uh, as I was a newbie in the group, I, you know, I, they didn't have much. You know, I I had to earn trust, so I remember uh, I. I, I look at different channels that talked about Cicada, like Ed from the Outer Dark, or uh, you know uh, who who was close friends with Tracy Beans back then, uh, and uh, that led me like to this sort of funnel, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Anyway, the 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 thing about QAnon, the channel that used to talk about Cicada, and that normally also talked about PizzaGate or PedoGate, suddenly started to shift into this QAnon narrative. Uh, I was seeing it from the inside, and I saw many things reminiscent from the group press and. You know, you can see that something is going on, but you can't understand it. And I remember asking a, a, another member there, hey, so so what's up with this QAnon? Is, is you know, are, are we behind it? Are, are people uh, from the group doing it? 
and she just made this little laugh like, <laughs> uh, I can't tell you. Mm. So I, I, you know, was like, okay, then it's on a need, need to know basis. Uh, then I, I, then there was a series of, of events that have that that happened. Let, let, let me stop you for a it, second. Let me stop you for a second. Uh, you, you know, with, sure. with Pizzagate, right? When when that first started hitting the uh, the ground, I, I heard about it through Tracy Twyman, uh, who since passed away. Um, and mm-hmm. I did the very first radio show on on Pizzagate. And and I think it was Reddit. It was being mostly on Reddit back when it was as a subreddit, and uh, they were flipping out. Oh, Ed Opperman, you know, he's got a million listeners, and he's talking about Pizzagate. This is all game changer. And then later on, mm-hmm. when I first heard about Q, I heard about Q and Q and on the first week when he made that first post about that Hillary Clinton was about to be arrested in five days. Tick tock, tick tock, right? But that that uh-huh. that never came true. That, there was, and I knew it was going to come true. I knew right away that it was a hoax from that very first post. Why would the very first post be something so ridiculous that you had to know it wasn't going to come true? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Well, I, I think that I think that they were uh, first of all that those claims were being basically echoed from Robert David Steele. Yeah. He was making those claims way before. Like almost the, you know, that he was going to go to prison, that he's a, a, a lesbian carnivore. Uh, those 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 kind of allegations go way back back then. And again, uh, if you want to, we, we're in terms where where reality or truth uh, really doesn't matter what what it matters for them it's it's a good story an engaging story right uh they 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 even some uh some uh some of the leaders of QAnon even mm-hmm. mention it as in being as part of a play as a, a, as a script uh, like scene one and scene, uh, mm-hmm. uh there have been uh several uh Post and I'm talking specifically about a uh, big QAnon pusher that's now banned from from Twitter, uh, named Lisa Clapier, a really uh, big important player that I have to bring her name on. She has been uh, infiltrating activist movements since Occupy and, and before, and uh, and. She, she was one. Of, she she is one of the main promoters uh, of not only QAnon but also the the cult of I am that that that's that's also another little nugget that I'm sure that after Flynn's prayer to the seven race, many people said like, whoa, 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 whoa wait, what? <laughs> what did he just say? And uh, and I'm talking about you know Michael Flynn. This uh, I think it was uh, uh, this year uh, where he uh, was in a Christian congregation and and was invited to give a uh, a prayer. And he started uh, with this prayer that wasn't Catholic, wasn't Christian, but was occultist was from the I am was invoking the seven rays of light that comes from Elizabeth Clare Prophet wow. uh, Church Universal and Triumphant or uh, even it, this caused a commotion to be, even within Christian uh, move, uh, you know uh, pundits uh, and a uh, the the cult of uh, I am has almost the, the same characteristics as in as in QAnon as in being they believe that they are Christians and patriots believe that they well uh, that that that, that Saint Germain is their high command like their powerful leader and you will see uh, within the same group of people that we are talking about today, one of them, most prominent, 
goes by Saint Germain mm. and has signed contracts as using that name and uh, has, has uh, made Sean Stone, who is the son of of the Hollywood director Oliver Stone, to. Uh, acknowledge him as Saint Germain. Really, and I believe he, he yeah. describes himself as a Luciferian Sean Stone. Uh, but by the way, to, to back up a little bit, Robert David Steele. Uh, people can go to my archives. I interviewed Robert David Steele as well. He's some kind of former CIA. I don't know what his role was in the CIA. If it was anything significant? And and even to say NSA. NSA is like the largest employer in Maryland. They got a parking lot with like sixty thousand parking spots. Uh, so to be involved in the NSA is not like some prestigious uh, operation. So who knows what these guys were up to. But Robert David Steele also made some claim that there were 100,000 child sex slaves on Mars. Uh, so the guy was out there. A uh, very bizarre guy. And I, I gotta tell you, uh, are you familiar, familiar with uh, Patrick Berge? Oh, uh, I know about it, about him and, and how he connects. He was basically uh, you know, playing he claims that he was doing his civic duty by you know, banging this Russian chick, Maria <laughs> uh, Okay, okay. Yeah, real I, quick, I, real quick. I had Patrick Berge on the show too, as well, and he talks about meeting with um, the, the Overstock dot com guy and uh, all these people with the. Uh, anyway. He, he so has, yeah, he has a lot of inf- information too about the the uh, Mar-a-Lago uh, uh, top secret documents. But he told me that Michael Flynn's son at one of these meetings uh, attended one of these prior January six meetings with two transvestite prostitutes as his escorts. So when you tell me that these people are some yeah. kind of Christians, <laughs> you know, I don't know what a bizarre uh, thing they got going on. Yeah. But this is some group here. Not, not, yeah, that I didn't know about that, but I, 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 you know, again, they they use Christianity and belief as a weapon, you know, as, as a because Michael Flynn comes from he was the top psychological operations general back in Afghanistan. Right. You know, he 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 is trained. That's why in an interview with Alex Jones in January 5th uh, in InfoWars, he talks where he's talking about how is it possible that it's January 5th and we still don't have the results. You know, I've been part of of of, uh, of bringing down governments or or or, or, or yeah, they, they basically. Uh, admitting that that he, you know, I I've been part of psy upping people, and and we tell them how to do the elections, and this is just one this one day prior, and uh, but there's like so many there's the uh, now Ruse commission uh, connection to Michael Flynn, mm-hmm. so it, it's just uh, you know it's it's. A mistake that uh, that I've seen many people make that 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 they think that just like Michael Flynn, oh, he he was promoting Q, and at one point he was uh, talking, and he got into trouble by talking with uh, the Russians about the sanctions. But it's more than that. You know, he he wasn't just talking about uh, with the Russians about the sanctions. He was talking about with Russia. With with Sergei Kislyak, who is a member of the Nauru's Commission, which is an Iranian uh, like social club that every year does this uh, gala event. Now, the Nauru's is, uh, is, if I understand correctly, it's like the New Year's Eve of uh, uh, of uh, Iran or, or, or something. Might might be wrong, but it's a gala event where. Michael Flynn has been uh, on our guest uh, since it started. And one of their main um, talks, uh, the CEOs are two people. Bijan Kian, who was the associate of Michael Flynn and, and the Flynn Intelligence Group, who was in charge of doing the the. Transition. Who was part of the transition team of Trump? 
and another guy named Nasser Kasemini. Maybe I'm saying the, the 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 last name wrong, but he's the CEO of NH NHK uh, Corporate. He he has uh, money, and he and actually in the where when Flynn disclosed uh, his earnings and, and uh, there was an entry of oh I think uh, just. Uh, a uh, uh, large amount given by this man to Michael Flynn. Oh. Now, why is this man important? Because he was in business. He he's the godfather of Thomas Schoenberger's son. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. He was in business. Bus- let me stop you for a yeah. second, real quick. First of all, we got to remember too Flynn's involvement with January six. It was Flynn's brother. Uh, who was also a general, that they had to go through before mm-hmm. they could call out the National Guard to come and protect the capitals. And, and there was a lot of delays there. Tell us, who is Thomas yes. Schoenberger? His name comes up in this over and over and over again. Who is Thomas Schoenberger? Well, Thomas Schoenberger is um, an ex convict, two times ex convict for cyber stalking. Mm. Uh, he is uh, a man who started as a fake arts dealer. That's how he got to meet lots of interesting people uh, because he he sold like he would take like this thing that looked old and would sell it to people that that were uh, really into Mozart. Actually, the company that he he made a company with this Nasser Kasemi, sorry, a name uh, Amadeus Investment, um, and and they they I they did a lot of shady things like uh, you know create uh, relics out of things that are were not and sell them to really important people like uh Bruce C. Clark, who was the the head of the CIA and who basically uh was running the the Cold War. Uh, he he was running the CIA during the era of the Cold War. And it was a connection that didn't make sense. I first I didn't believe it. But this year, I, I had the opportunity to go to Vienna and went directly to this uh, uh, person who gave them uh, the relics, who is actually uh, a, uh, a descendant of a Mozart's housekeeper or, or landlord. You know, and the story that we know about of Mozart is because Mozart wrote letters to his landlord saying, "Oh, I'm going to pay. I'm working." Blah blah, and mm-hmm. he sent them to them. So he comes from that family, and he has and he has a uh, an antique uh, repair shop right in front of the Mozart Museum in Vienna. And uh, I had heard that that Thomas had burned him with thirty with some money and with some real relics. Uh that wasn't really the big thing, but at least, at least Thomas made good publicity of it. it is that when Mozart's house in Vienna was turned into a museum, uh you know, the boards, the the staircases, all all was taken out. So uh, the guy who who has his shop in front became friends with the engineer, and and suddenly the, the the he told him, hey, if stuff comes out, why don't you just you know give it to me and I'll see what what I can do with them. Mm. And and he got yes pieces of the 
original floor from Mozart house, you know, but it's basically like, yeah, a piece of floor. <laughs> and, uh, Thomas got a notice of this and uh, got got him to send him the 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 piece of board uh, uh promised him thirty thousand dollars then paid him only half of it then called him again asked for another fifteen thousand dollars because his son allegedly had cancer which he didn't and uh and then he disappeared. Hmm. And uh, there's another case, like in, in his cicada puzzles, he has promoted for a long time the painting of Salvador Mundi, uh, you know, the lost Leonardo painting. There's a documentary about it. Uh, it, it was the, a piece of art uh, that was sold for the highest price ever and and thomas was uh making like making a legend out of it since like six years ago and I, when i started investigating about it the whole painting thing and how it went up on price it was all a con like it was uh uh there's a great documentary uh, about it. It's called The Lost Leonardo, and it said, and it, they explain how from something that cost costed like I don't know five thousand dollars ended up being one of the most uh, expensive expensive pieces of art ever sold, and it was sold to uh, to to Prince. Uh, well, 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 Arturo, uh, um, is, we're about halfway through the show. We're talking to Arturo Tafoya. You can find him at the Conspiracy Distillery on YouTube and ConspiracyDistillery.com. So let's get, get, get too caught up in the art, okay? Now, like, Thomas Schoenberg, yeah, his connection sorry. to Cicada and Q, what is that? I, I get that the guy's okay. up to some stuff, man. I can't get the impression. Yeah. The guy's out there. Yeah, he, it, it, it's too much of a story. Like, it, it's too long. But, oh, really? okay, you you. Just basically, when I got recruited into Cicada, that was the guy who recruited me. That was the guy who who I saw that had was running the show. Not only by running the show as him, uh, basically being the project manager because I didn't saw him do much other than you know, oh, you do this, you do that, well, let's do this. Uh, he he introduced me with the other people. He's the one who has. Uh, and going back to QAnon, uh, who has by himself admitted that he created QAnon back in 2018. Then he just claimed that that it was false and that he was true. It's a nebulous uh, cycle, but if, if you can go just straight to the source, Daily Dot articles are written by Mike Rothschild, right? And it says uh, this LARPers claim to have come up with QAnon, and you will see that the what Thomas had to say back then. Now the connection with with QAnon is goes. Even back, I, I, as I said, I, I, I don't have evidence, uh, enough evidence to say, you know, Thomas was posting as Q, but I can tell you that, but I do have evidence and there is, uh, e even the, the, the same people who were, who were part of it have come out and said it. He was behind FBI and on. Uh, okay, and, but, and let me interject real quick. The audience can go back to Spreaker and Google Michael Rothschild, Spreaker, Ed Opperman, and the, my interview with Michael Rothschild about this very topic uh, will come up there. You can hear what he has to say. Uh, I'm sorry I interrupted you. What were you saying? 
Oh, 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 oh okay. Uh, if you want, to, I can send you the link. Uh, daily dot, uh, uh, you know, daily dot and Takeda three three zero one, and and pro- is probably the first. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll put, send that to me. Yeah. We'll put it in the description of the article. Now, now, what about other characters? We hear these stories. So, Defango. I mean, first of all, uh, uh, Schoenberger says he can. He confessed. He made an admission that he was Q. He was posting as Q. Yes, many times, and at the same time, he has claimed uh, the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. That's just the office obfuscate the truth. What does uh, Arturo Tafoya think his motive was? Well, uh, he was paid for it. He he was paid for for. You could say that he is the literal liter, literal definition of a cyber mercenary. Mm-hmm. Who paid him? When I met him, he, he was working with uh, Tanya Cornwell, who is the wife of the lawyer of Devin Nunes. Oh, really? Uh, uh, who is uh, the same lawyer for Cash Patel, for uh, this other Russian lady that you know, got into trouble? Uh, Bato Maroma? Robert David Steele. Really? Uh, yes, uh, Stephen Biss. Uh, it, it, super chick, and he, and she was. Paying, uh, they form a little group, right? Uh, between uh, Tanya, Thomas Schoenberger, and this guy named The Fango. Now, I'm familiar with was, the name The Fango. Uh, from, from, from Pizzagate, he appeared out of nowhere. Pizzagate become this sudden Pizzagate expert. And then I saw some of his uh, methodology of uh, gathering evidence on Pizzagate and presenting it to the police. It, it was ridiculous. Uh, so I dismissed him immediately. But tell us who Tefango was. Yeah. Also, when, when I met Tefango, uh I immediately got this wrong bot, like... Because I I know about compute like I I actually know programming and all that. Right. So when you listen to somebody that knows a little bit about about it, uh, knows just enough to fool people to make uh, to make them think that you're a hacker, that you're a you're this and that. Uh, that just it ticked me off, and it was one of the things that, you know, how how can this be the guy who was selected to guide the new revolution because he was given this uh, the spear the, that pierced the side the the side of Christ? By the way, this happened in 2017, and and, and the Cicada puzzle, he, uh, there was this prize about this alleged. Uh, uh, Spear of Destiny that the Fango went and found, tried to find in, in the desert. Uh, Wait, so there's a claim he, he found didn't... this in real life? That he found a physical spear? Hey, he did found a uh, physical uh, spear. And, and, I mean, the whole puzzle sent you to this desert, but uh, in this cave, uh, according to him, he didn't find anything. But when he later uh, got introduced for the first time with the for people in Takeda in a restaurant, and that's where it, they gave him the spear mm. temporarily. Fascinating. No, the Fango. Do we did we identify him? Who he really is, and what his occupation is, what his background is? He's a uh, he's a uh, propagandist. Uh, uh, a modern disruptor. He's a YouTuber. 24 24 7 yeah he has he was part he was uh he was even served in the Seth Rich uh case uh you've also seen probably seen him in, in several two documentaries unfortunately he 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 keeps on saying that that he came up with him. He's actually the only person that's 
I don't know why he thinks that that's something good that he claims that he came up with Q. Hmm. Now, now you mentioned to me but, off the air before the show started that there's, this has been going on for 10 years. There's other global grifters, there are other past scams and radicalizations. What can you tell us about other things on the same thread, the same people? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, well, this uh, is, is, is nothing new. You probably heard of, of Nisara and Gisara. Yeah. Which, which is this this. this whole I, I, idea of, of that that goes back to Reagan and and where basically all the problems of the world are, are going to be saved. There's uh, uh, many, many variations, but if you go to uh, 2012, 2013, and if you, in the first parts of what it was the alternative media, right? Specifically, Doug Hackman, Doug, Doug Hackman, or Hackman and Hackman. Yeah, right. Back then, in 2012, they had someone called V. Right. Right, and and that V was an insider who gave them, uh, uh, you know, it was the same exactly the the same thing they were calling for. A civil war to buy gold to buy silver. Uh, uh, Want to hear something funny? And when I was on Revolution yeah. Radio, freedomslips.com, dot com, and I quit that station in two thousand thirteen, that my pop my slot was a very popular slot on Friday nights. They gave my slot to V right after me because because <laughs> it had so much traffic going to that site. Because I was a guest on Coast to Coast uh, with George Nury, and they had the link from George Nury's site to that site, so it, it got a lot of traffic to the site. But the fascinating stuff. Now, what about things like Nibiru and the two thousand twelve Mayan calendar? Were these guys involved in that too? It, it was the same group. Yeah. It, it, I knew it. Uh, it's the 2012 scare was part of, you know, uh, going back into this. Uh, if you go back to the initial, uh, to the start of Q, you're going to see people like David Wilcock, right. Benjamin Fulford, and, and and a bunch of uh, other people that oh I call them the Gaia crew as in the the like the Netflix version of of, of yoga or wellness. Yeah, but all those people were created by Kerry Cassidy from Project Camelot. She was the first one to give them a they, from. And I know she's a hoax, man. I caught her red handed. She she's a hoax. Absolutely, but th their idea. Their, their philosophy comes from a person called Barbara Marx Hubbard. Okay. Have you ever heard of her? I have not. Well, yeah, uh, yes. Well, this is this might interest you. Barbara Max Hubbard uh, once ran for uh, the Democratic uh, vice presidency. She was a very wealthy uh, daughter of a toy maker. She was also a futurist, and uh, she's considered the, the mother of the conscious evolution movement. Basically, the, uh, she, upon her philosophy, uh, is that crisis precedes transformation, that, uh, that when there is a crisis, that the, uh, that's the moment where we eat. Evolved, and so in her, there's a documentary that she made where she explains that in 2012, the movie 2012 was really hype, and everybody was like, "What's going to happen?" So uh, she got in contact with her PR uh, and 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 started uh, this dissemination campaign uh, within their. The groups. It, it was a group that 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 already had YouTubers and 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 they called them agents of change, certified agents of change, and it, it, it's uh, people that either throughout different media will uh, 
are uh, push push towards the ideologies of this lady. This this lady so influential. She uh, she she's in the same level as as Deepak Chopra, mm. you know. And and one of her main core philosophies. I mean, she was part of of, of the. She was trained by Gorbachev. She 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 was part of well not part but work with the twenty uh, first uh, battalion, which were the guys uh, who stared goats. I don't know if you've heard of that movie or story. Yeah, very familiar. As a matter of fact, I dealt with some of those people during the Art Bell feud. And by the way, Robert David Steele, so he came out of uh, Kerry Cassidy as well. That's where he got his first start. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm And, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, yeah, we got about 10 minutes left, okay? I'm gonna, I'm definitely going to beg you to come back. Hopefully, we can tape next week a part two. But what about other <laughs> characters and all this? Because <laughs> you know, this is there's so much here, man. And I'd like to get that woman, too. That, what was her name? Laura or, or Pilly? Laura, Laura, Laura Dilly. Yeah, yeah. I def- love to oh, yeah. Too. So yeah, us- you should definitely give, give her a, a, uh, her paper a read. Is the best that, that I've seen from... Uh, QAnon, on not not only because it's, qu- it's quantitative data and and it's you know it it's it's there and and it caused so much of a trouble that the actual uh media arm of Russia went after her and and yes for uh I think it's important to know uh, for, uh more for 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 you guys uh, uh, and for, for Americans, is that uh, a bunch of Russian this uh, this paper was going to come out and let's say in, uh, was going to be published. Uh, the professor did a uh, uh, one the day before she did a live stream where she talked about it. You can find the live stream in my channel. Uh, I uploaded and and caused this commotion, this scare that. Uh, the journal where it was going to be published got stormed by comments, by emails. Uh, the the they, there were show, shows and RT made specifically to attack that paper, and it was eventually taken down after being peer reviewed approved. It was already ready to be published. It was green lighted everything and 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 russian disinformation agents were able to block and put down american re- american research yeah, and, and not only that yeah rt is russia today and again carrie cassidy robert david Steele, all these characters are constantly uh on russia today uh, but i'll oh, go ahead oh yeah the, uh, absolutely they, they they, it, 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 as I said, it, it, it's the same network, but yeah. but like uh, those old guys, the, like um, Jim Fetzer, Robert Red, Robert David Steele, uh, Jim Fetzer, Ray McGovern, and all those keep uh, keep bringing new people. Like they they grab on crazy beans and 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 grab put them under their their wing, and oh, I'm going to introduce you to this and to that and to this and to that. They're just, uh, uh, you know, doing what what they, they always have as almost as a mantra is having plausible deniability. Right, and, and Jim, Rob, Rob, Jim Fetzer, you were mentioning, I had him on the show too, uh, and we were talking about a whole other topic, and he maneuvered me in this way. I was young and I was inexperienced on, on an internet radio station, and they maneuvered me. Mm-hmm. I had a producer I didn't really know who was controlling the board, and at the end of the show, uh, Jim Fetzer started screaming all this crazy stuff into the mic, and I had no way of stopping him. I couldn't hang up on him, I couldn't mute him, I couldn't do a damn thing, and I, that was the last time I ever let that happen. Uh, now. Uh, uh, Arturo mm-hmm. Tafoya 
There's a bunch of other names and all this, and we have to cover this in like the next five minutes. But we're going to have you back, okay? But names like Colonel Michael Aquino and that uh, uh, Paul <laughs> Vallely, uh, who co-wrote Mind War, a psychological operations handbook for the U.S. military. Mm-hmm. Colonel Aquino is the head of the Temple of Set, a satanic cult, okay? Uh, a very secretive mm-hmm. satanic cult. But also, too, what about that HBO documentary that brought in all those guys like Watkins and Code Monkey and all those characters? Uh, uh, is the HBO documentary Q into the Storm? Right. Uh, they, they go uh, in, into a different path. They do, and episode five, I think that it's the most worthy to to watch. Uh, but in general, he 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 did a good job. But he he was led to 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 believe in, in, into that. It was Ron Watkins, you know, and that unfortunately time has proven that you know Ron Watkins is, is not to you, you, you. We all saw how he did on on politics. The, you know, he didn't got any support, not even from his own party members. On the contrary, he just made a fool of himself. He doesn't have the personality, the drive, uh, or, or even the. the Ideology. So, uh, and, and uh, uh, yeah, it's it's worth watching. Definitely, if you have a chance, uh, and during this week, listen to the American Psyop podcast, uh, which is uh, a narration from uh, West Clark Jr., who is the son of West Clark, the who was once the head of NATO. Who was yeah. also targeted, and 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 by the same cult that I'm trying to expose that I'm, I'm, uh, that target me that is part of the same group, and and but he he actually was drove in, into the point where he believed that he was the angel Metatron. Wow, that's Wesley Clark. Okay, and he was Wesley Clark's son. Yes, wow. Wes Clark Jr. Uh, he he was surrounded by the same people that surrounded me, and at and he he ended up leading like thousands of veterans into Standing Rock, who was another that was another uh, uh, propaganda event that was just uh, a stunt. But he was there believing that he was sent by God and he was Metatron and and he. Uh, he tells this incredible story of how he was targeted not, uh, uh, partially because he, he was, uh, you know, the, the, the son of the head of, of NATO. Yeah. And, and this, 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 so it's an amazing story and it's really important because it, it builds a, a structure, which is going to be easier for people late, later to understand uh, the group of people that I'm talking about, the group of people that I've been, that I'm, con- that we're trying to expose and, and the reach that they have, you know, it's, it's, it's been five years, uh, uh only, only on, until recently I've been able to do it more and more professionally. But I, I really, I would never imagine that it would have taken so long to expose something that you know that I can that I can say that I was there. I saw it. Nobody told me. <laughs> I I uh, I I drew, I was recruited at the same almost at the same time when Q started, and, and unfortunately, as it started, and I was a new guy, I didn't understand many of the things that were happening. But I made this past years by my. my Task to really understand it, and 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 once you see like those little uh, pieces of evidence, like if you look into Barbara Max Hubbard, mm. it, it's it, it's it's something amazing. It's 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 amazing because it's the same kind of beliefs that Steve Bannon has. You know about this combination between Kundalini. Uh, and Catholicism and 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 all that. 
Yeah, Kerry Cass uh, talks about Kundalini all the time. And, and, and it's all this goes back to so the, the guy who ran Revolution Radio, this guy, uh, Mike Ringley, was some kind of FBI informant himself. Very strange guy with, again, computer tech skills, called himself a hacker and all this kind of stuff. Uh, he's passed away now, supposedly. Who knows? Uh, but we've been talking to Arturo Tafoya. Now, I want you to check him out on his website, conspiracydistillery.com, and also his YouTube channel, uh, Conspiracy Distillery. And then you could find his Twitter. He's a friend of mine on Twitter. It's A-T-A-F-O-Y-O-U. O V S K Y. I've done it wrong every single time. No one's gonna find you on Twitter, bro. <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> never gonna find you. On but, Twitter. But they have it. That, that definitely. But but yeah, they they follow they they follow you. It's, it's relatively easy to yeah, just a password some, something that's gonna show up. Right. And I, I promise you, I'll. Post. I'll tag him when I put the show up on Twitter and stuff like that. I recommend people do watch <laughs> that. That HBO documentary, the Q a Storm Coming, the Coming Storm, whatever it's called, uh, is it's it just as a soap opera. It's fascinating to watch. You're not going to be able to put it down. But like he says, the fourth episode you said, or the fifth episode, was most important. Fifth. 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 Actually, yeah, the fifth episode used uh, footage uh, that I did for the Cicada Puzzle. <laughs> uh, funny thing, without my permission, we I got in a fight with the crews. We're not now we're good friends, but yeah. uh, you know, imagine seeing your footage on HBO and nobody asks you. Or oh, tell me, nobody... oh, tell me about it. it. Happens to me all the time, man. They mentioned me on Morning Joe. They mentioned me on uh, Rush Limbaugh. I get no credit. Uh, it's, by the way, Morning <laughs> Joe was about the Steve Bannon porn and meth house, which I was all over uh, way at the beginning. No. But, yeah, oh, that's a great story. I was going to say something. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, so I guess we'll just have to move on. Oh, yeah. I'd like to have you back right away, man. Like, maybe we can get together Friday. Uh, so let's uh, touch base sure. on Twitter. Yeah. And we'll we'll flush this out a little further, and then we'll get into all this stuff. Watkins, Code Monkey, all these characters uh, that surround this whole crazy story. Uh, I tell you, I think, Mr. Arturo Tofoya, I think you're onto something here. Uh, everything you're saying makes sense to me, and I have a lot of personal experience with a lot of these characters, and they're all very suspicious. And there's other, these, these other YouTube creations and these other characters that come out of nowhere. Suddenly, they got 300,000 followers. They got books coming out. The books, mm -hmm. quoting my show, I get no credit on that either uh, but all this kind of stuff going on uh, so and we, people really got to keep because it hasn't stopped like you said in the notes the pre-interview notes this is still going on today these people are running these operations uh, Arturo Tafoya uh, the conspiracy distillery conspiracy distillery dot com thank you so much thank you so much man man great great talking to you have a great day good night sir <laughs>